Engeguem la cinquena entrega de la sèrie d'entrevistes per conèixer tots els premiats dels Premis Ones Mediterrània 2022, gent de l'àmbit nacional i internacional en compromís per la societat, la igualtat i la solidaritat, ambient i drets humans. En definitiva, defensant un món millor. I avui parlem de feminisme, entre altres coses, i ho fem amb dues dones. Per una part, amb la Sunita Nassir Tarim, que és licenciada en Enginyeria Civil, membre de la ONU i defensora dels drets per les dones. També afganesa, que ens relata l'experiència de la immigració, la qual ha patit dos cops, el 2001 i el 2021. Very welcome, Sunita. Thank you for coming to this interview. I, a més, no estem sols, aquesta és una entrevista doble, perquè tenim també a la Cristina Gallats, periodista que va exercir com a secretària d'Estat d'Assumptes Exteriors entre 2020 i 2021 i també fou comissionada per l'Agenda 2030 i Govern d'Espanya entre 2018 i 2020. A més, fos la subsecretària general de l'ONU i cap del Departament d'Informació Pública on es va convertir en la dona espanyola amb major càrrec dins de l'organització. Molt bones, Cristina, gràcies per venir tu també. Moltes gràcies, un plaer. Un plaer compartit aquí amb la Sunita i amb vosaltres. Primer de tot volia parlar amb tu, Cristina, que ens expliquis una mica d'aquest binomi, no? Per què fem aquesta entrevista doble? Com coneixes, com contactes amb la Sunita? Com neix aquesta relació? Doncs mira, perquè l'esforç que va fer Espanya per donar suport a les persones que varen patir i que encara pateixen la caiguda del règim democràtic d'Afganistan i la presa del poder per als talibans, va fer que un grup de dones i d'homes, però vull subratllar el fet que eren dones, líders en aquell país que havien ajudat moltíssim en la modernització, doncs tinguessin refugi aquí a Espanya. I en aquest procés d'ajudar en la seva integració, jo i altres persones ens vàrem volcar sobretot en les dones, identificant quines eren i després ajudant en que es poguessin integrar de la millor manera possible. I allà vaig trobar persones com la Sunita, persones com la Getty, persones com la Zara, que en el seu país, Afganistan, tenien uns papers de lideratge. I nosaltres aquí les volíem ajudar, vam rebre tot el suport administratiu del govern, però l'important és que es trobessin amb amics que valoraven el que havíem fet en el seu país i que ens comprometíem que la seva presència a Espanya també fos positiva, no només per ells, sinó per nosaltres, perquè persones com la Sunita són persones que tenen grans qualitats, altíssimes qualificacions i, lògicament, ens poden aportar molt. Doncs des d'aquesta visió jo vaig entrar en contacte amb ella i amb altres companyes que ella tenia a les Nacions Unides i aquí estem col·laborant, veient com progressivament ella, la seva família, es va integrant, va sortint endavant i alhora no oblidem el que està passant al seu país, Afganistan. Anem a parlar precisament d'aquesta història amb la Sunita. Let's talk about this history. Sunita, as we said, licensed in civil engineering in Kabul in 2013. You said that you ever watched for the Afghanistan development. So how do you live your professional evolution in Afghanistan in the last years? Hola, como estas? Soy Sunita Nasser Tarim, una ingeniera de Afganistan. Muchas gracias por la oportunidad para mí. Soy una mujer afgana que he vivido la experiencia de ser inmigrante dos veces. Y mi español es muy mal uh, porque ahora uh, I'm in learning process. So if it's fine, I will want to uh, switch in English. I will continue the interview in English. Yeah. As uh, I said, uh, I have experienced uh, the immigration life two times. For the first time in 1995, while the Afghan Republic collapsed by the Taliban, we had to leave the country towards Pakistan to save our life. 
And in 2001, when the interim government was formed in Afghanistan, we came back to Kabul and continue to live in my country. Presently, in August uh, 2021, after collapsing Islamic Republic of Afghanistan by the Taliban for the second time, I had to leave my country to survive and save my life. Although I'm in a safe place now, but I'm still concerned of my family because they are still in Afghanistan and their lives are treating. Uh, in 2001, when the interim government was formed in Afghanistan, we came back to Kabul and continued my education in Kabul, Afghanistan. I completed Bachelor of Civil Engineering in 2013. Uh, my goal for life was to work for the development of my country, Afghanistan. Uh, that's the reason that I decided to be an engineer, although uh, being an engineer in Afghanistan environment was much and difficult. So I was thinking that it could be a means to achieve my life mission. I have been working since 2010 with many organizations and companies, and I have started working for the United Nations right after completing my degree in 2013. Thank you. In uh, all your, your career, you have always been a, a defensor of the women's rights and al also in your job in the United Nations. How do you see the, the quality levels in an occidental, occidental organization la like that? And what difference and similarities uh, you find with your natal country? Uh, as I said, Afghanistan had, uh, has been in conflict for over 30 years. During these three decades, Afghanistan have experienced and witnessed unspeakable violence and accusation, enforced disappearance, summary execution, torture, rape, indiscrimination, bombardment, and wanton destruction have been part of their daily life for decades. It's a, it's has always been difficult for a woman, even during the Islamic Republic. There were limitations for girls and women for their basic human rights, such as the right of education, labor market for women, freedom of expression, and so on. And being an Afghan woman, I faced many challenges, limitations, and barriers in all aspects of life. Although I had supportive parents, my parents of their whole life for my sisters and my education, since it was not normal for a woman to work outside somehow. I was able to break the taboo, and after completing my bachelor, I started working as an engineer for the United Nations for the development of the country. As an individual and as a member of UN Habitat, I have worked towards realization of a world in which men and women are recognized as equal partners for development and to have equal human rights and fundamental freedom, including freedom of discrimination from urban policy and practices so that socially inclusive and environmentally sustainable cities can be achieved more rapidly. And uh, therefore, I decided to support those who were in need and I turned the obstacles to opportunity for others of my type to make positive changes in their lives. My profession is civil engineering to make safe cities, and communities, but my passion has always been to work for women's rights, to cope up with their needs, their well-being, to ensure gender equality for sustainable development. The programs which I was involved, I had uh, ensured gender equality <clears throat> up to 20 to 30 percent of funds from the project were allocated to the female and identified projects. And the Specific aim of this female identified project was to improve public space, mobility, and employment opportunity for uh, women and girls, and to build up their capacities uh, uh, towards a gender-friendly environment. I will explain some of the uh, achievements that we had with the Afghan women. Uh, access of uh, women to housing property rights. Uh, I was part of a pro uh, program which was a municipal governance support program. And during uh, uh, through this program, we were drafting the regulation and procedure that will improve women's access to the property right. The occupancy certificate regulation provides for the registration of women and sole proprietors of giant proprietors. Occupancy certificate procedure also provides in incentive for household that register women as a property for giant uh, 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 property. 
as uh, in Afghanistan, normally the uh, property or the land uh, certificate uh, or occupancy certificate belongs to a man. If you are uh, you are a daughter, the land belongs to the father or two brothers. And when you got married, the land uh, that you own from your uh, father, it's going to be belong to your husband. So the uh, story that was uh, from beginning that the occupancy certificate or the land deed should be by the name of a man. During this program, we changed the regulation and the procedure, and we nominate a woman. If it's with the husband, the property should be shared between 50% to men and women. And if you are a daughter of a house with having three to four brothers, you have to have the right for the uh, property. And we were not uh, registering properties uh, until they did not nominate a woman as a uh, preparatory. And the other program that uh, uh, well, I think that was beneficial for the women to tackle the challenge and the limitation that currently we are facing in the labor market, uh, it was a job uh, creating job opportunity for women. For the it was professional practice program for fresh graduates in line with the United Nations 50-50 goal for equal representation of men and women at the workplace. You inhabited Afghanistan and instituted as strategy to increase the number of female staff among programs, a professional practice program, recruit female graduates to work with UN Habitat for six months, and they were fresh graduates from university or the, those who were working uh, on their thesis. So the professional practice program helped young female to gain workplace experience and to improve their confidence of women to seek employment and work outside their homes through the job fair program in universities, we were able to hire more than 100 young girls. So, okay. uh, thank you, Sunta. I També avui estem parlant no, avui de, 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 de feminisme, de dones que, que trenquen barreres i, i també voldria no, no deixar passar l'oportunitat de que tenim aquí a la Cristina perquè clar, també ho, ho, ho ha experimentat en la seva pròpia carn. Jo vull parlar d'aquest càrrec, no? Aquesta, que és eh, la dona espanyola de major càrrec dins de, de, de l'organització de les Nacions Unides. No sé com reps aquesta responsabilitat perquè es parla molt d'aquest eh, síndrome de l'impostor que molts cops tenen la, les dones que, que, que estan als càrrecs, que per desgràcia encara no són moltíssimes. No, no sé com vas rebre aquesta responsabilitat i com, com ha sigut la, la teva carrera. Doncs mira, uh, vaig rebre aquesta responsabilitat amb... Um, uh, em vaig sentir molt honrada i alhora vaig pensar que era una bona manera de treballar perquè aquesta visió d'inclusió, aquesta visió de respecte, aquesta visió de superar les uh, barreres que les dones tenien, doncs uh, es pogués uh, imposar. I jo crec que les Nacions Unides, la Sunita és un exemple, el com ella i els equips de Nacions Unides Afganistà treballaven per incluir les dones, el lloc on es patia la més gran de les discriminacions. Per tant, crec que les que hem tingut responsabilitats, ara ja no estic a l'ONU, ara estic al govern d'Espanya, doncs eh, el que hem de fer és no perdre mai uh, la idea de que de qualsevol lloc on estem hem de treballar per la inclusió, hem de treballar per la igualtat i hem de ser robustes en la defensa del feminisme i assegurar que els homes també participen doncs, d'aquesta tasca. A mi m'impressiona veure com la Sunita en un lloc tan precís que és a les Nacions Unides, Afganistà, doncs es dedicava a treballar amb accions estratègiques perquè impactessin les dones, perquè tinguessin doncs, els drets de propietat, perquè poguessin sortir als espais públics. Això és el que jo també vaig intentar fer a un altre nivell, a una altra escala, amb uns temes diferents, però sempre, sense perdre mai que hi ha una una diferència, una bretxa important entre homes i dones i que la nostra societat això no pot tolerar, ho hem de superar. Fins i tot en els països més avançats tenim aquests problemes, per tant, no, no hem de dir nosaltres aquí estem a Occident, tenim els mateixos drets, sí, sobre el paper, però sobre la realitat no. 
Gracias, Sara. M'agradaria acabar aquesta entrevista parlant amb la Sunita novament. Sunita, I would like to talk about the, the actual moment, because you are now uh, here in Spain, as you say, uh, but you are also working in, in some projects like the Alianza Shadows uh, Center of Innovation, and uh, it's a, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't have it, uh, or the Madrid uh, City's Voluntary Local Review. I want to... Mm, I see that in your career you are a person that is involved in, the, in many places and the destiny guides you and you help all the communities uh, where you are involucrated. That You said that this is something uh, innate at you. you, it's a way of be, a way of life that uh, involucrates in, in social actions, uh, the place that, that you live. Uh, well, it's not easy for me to experience the same situation twice. Now, as I said, I had left my family behind, my career, my country, my friends, and my identity just to survive. And now I'm living in Spain uh, as a refugee. Yeah, and I must start from the very beginning, which is not easy. But women are resilient, and I, I, I survived all those years to contribute to achieving the basic rights of women in Afghanistan. And Currently, uh, as you said, uh, I'm uh, in Spain. Uh, since uh, March 2022, I have started working as a project consultant with a smart and city solution uh, company. It's a corporate agency of the ITD UPM, Center for the Innovation and Technology for Human Development of the Polytechnic University of Madrid. So in, in this uh, company, I'm contributing to the implementation and dissemination of specific strategies for su sustainable development, climate change, and circular economy within the scope of the 2030 agenda. And currently, I am providing technical support to the Alianza Shiri project of ITD UPM. This is the first Spanish multi stakeholder partnership experience in the humanitarian field promoted by the Spanish cooperation. Through this project, we are providing energy access to the refugee camps and uh, host communities. This project is in Dola Alto Refugee. Uh, it's located in uh, southeastern Ethiopia, uh, close to the uh, Somali and Kenya. And also there's another project that I'm contributing uh, in uh, Madrid cities, voluntary local review project. And within this assignment, I will be reviewing the regulatory framework of the UN in general and UN Habitat, as well as other relevant normative documents to the develop a voluntary local review and will analyze the different documents uh, through the relation to the implementation of the 2030 agenda in the Madrid city. As you said, uh, and to uh, get familiar with the community and uh, to survive, uh, I uh, like to keep myself busy. So I uh, started working as a consultant with this uh, cooperative agency of ITD European, and also I'm uh, contributing to different uh, different uh, groups, uh, uh, feminist groups, uh, to raise the voice of Afghan women. Uh, as you know, the, uh, currently the situation of Afghan women are very bad because the schools are closed in Afghanistan. Um, uh, girls cannot go to school from sex standard. Uh, and girls are not allowed to go to school. So I'm uh, contributing in different uh, local and volunteer groups in Spain, just to raise the voice of Afghan women to the EU, to the United, uh, United Nations, that through these uh, groups, uh, we, I will be able to help uh, my Afghan fellow and other women in need in Afghanistan. So I, 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 as I said, I, now I'm uh, in Spain and I'm safe. But my friends, my family, uh, they are not safe in Afghanistan. And this is my job uh, to work for them from here. Uh, and I have uh, met with the uh, great group of uh, uh, global women leaders. Uh, and they are uh, helping us to raise the voice of Afghan women. And also there is another uh, group of uh, uh, Madrid feminist women, so they are they, they are they have written a statement uh, to the uh, EU Parliament and uh, through the Ministry of uh, Women Affairs 
that we could uh, raise the uh, voice of Afghan girls just for, for the, the basic right, which is uh, education. So, yeah, the, so, the, this is the activity that currently I am busy with. So we hope that the work achieves the, the, the goal to, to improve the, the, the situation in Afghanistan. We are running out of time, so be, I'm very pleased to, to come here. Uh, thank you, Sunita. Uh, I want to take the moment to extend my sense of thanks to the Premise Wins Award. Uh, and uh, uh, thanks to you uh, for the interview staff. Ok, so thank you and uh, gracias también a la Cristina. Uh, muchas gracias por, por venir, por hacer el podcast, esta entrevista doble que, que creo que ha estado muy interesante. Muchas gracias. Uh, enhorabuena por el trabajo que esteu fent de divulgación de unas personas, donas, que en el seu país uh, eran unas líderes espect espectaculares y que a España también se están ayudando y también están trabajando para ellas, para nosotras y para la sociedad que han dejado en Rera, donde encara hi tienen muchos familiares y muchos amigos. Muchas gracias. Gracias nuevamente a las dos. A la resta, gracias por escucharnos. Amb això ya ja acabamos. Nos vemos la semana que viene.